Okay, very good morning everyone. This is going to be the briefing for the 10th of April 2018. I'm going to start off by just looking at some of the charts technically as to what we saw yesterday, discuss some of the price action we saw in the dollar. Uh, we're going to look at the ruble and what's been affecting that. It's been quite a bit of a move in the ruble thus far this morning and overnight. We're then going to go look at the equity market which has been having a lot of volatility but some major developments overnight with regards to the US and China trade tensions. Um, and their sort of escalation taking place. So just having a quick look at this uh, dollar versus the ruble here, you can see the ruble really has been rallying. We're gonna come back to this in just a moment, but this is, well, let's start with this. I don't wanna spend too much time on this, but as we know, there was an airstrike conducted in um, Russia. And at the moment, what we have been seeing is a bit of tit for tat where Russia is uh, blaming uh, Israel and the United States is blaming Russia. And this has resulted in some sanctions being levied against um, some Kremlin-linked billionaires, which has caused the Russian stock market to start to tumble. So this has been a big move thus far. So ruble devaluing as well as the Russian stock market crashing. So this is that economic and political uncertainty, which leads to your domestic currency and equity marking moving in the same direction. But a big mover. So if any, anybody is trading the ruble, um, this is definitely a market to be keeping an eye on. Uh, going forward. So if we just flick across to our charts and let's have a quick look at what happened yesterday. Um, let's start with your dollar currency. So this was pretty lackluster in terms of your FX pairs, looking at your euro, some modest dollar weakness coming into the later part of the session once the Americans came in into the market. So at about one o'clock during that North American crossover, finally breaching the highs, making a clean run up until our one. A nice test to that and then the market is at the moment just range playing there. In terms of currency pairs, the most interesting market to look at yesterday was the Aussie dollar. So we turn around to DA6. Um, this is where sometimes, you know, just being open-minded with the currencies and then the products you're trading can be very beneficial. This was one of the bigger movers yesterday um, and a great, great technical, technical trade carried out here. Just if you understand the inter dependencies between asset classes. Um, so this move all started yesterday on the comments from Russia, uh, sorry, China, talking about using the devaluation of the Yuan as a tool for their um, trade dispute, let's call it, with the United States of America. So that devaluation of the Yuan, we touched upon this briefly yesterday in the morning brief, would have resulted in the dollar strength versus the Yuan. This dipped lower, so we saw the same sort of move in Euro dollar cable, the Aussie dollar. Um, but the Aussie dollar managed to hold on to its losses. Uh, if we look at where we were trading coming into that comment, we were really at the top of this range. Let me just draw this up for you guys. So really at the top of this range here. The comment comes out and unlike any other FX pairs, the Aussie dollar hung to its lows. And this is obviously due to the devaluation of the currency will then make importing base and industrial materials and metals from the Australian economy more expensive so that would weigh on their export so we saw some continued downside in the Aussie dollar a couple of guys in house here Nico very good trade he managed to get in short at pivot take it all the way down to this S1 level then managing to identify it's the bottom of the range getting in long over here and driving the market higher this was also due to a correlated move in the equity markets but really good reading of market sentiment understanding where you've got the highest risk versus reward for your trades so getting in around the bottom of the range and then playing the range what we have seen overnight is a further extension on these moves as we've broken higher finding support at the top of this range and then making another little push here this is largely due to what we saw in the equity market of, uh, last night so let me just flick over to the s p 500 as sort of our benchmark us equity market so the s p 500 well, let's go back and have a look just ruble on its lows as we speak so having a look at how we saw this equity market behave yesterday let me, um, so it remained under pressure. We had a really strong move lower on the Friday session, but then we started to recover some of those losses. And this is to be expected when you see a big move lower to expect some profit taking, a bit of consolidation. And there was a level we were looking at yesterday, which was sort of around this region here, marked up by sort of these lows here. And that provided some intraday resistance uh, to the upside here. And the market was range bound between these lows here and that pivot level. And this was to be expected in the low volume environment. Um, 
but then really when we saw the North American crossover and the US cash open, we started to see quite a strong move to the upside. So if we let me just get rid of this moving average. So once we had the US cash open, so at 230, strong move to the upside. Um, really, it was, it was a bit of a tease to be fair, because it was uncertain whether we're gonna see a risk on or risk off environment, but with the low volumes, the range really held its ground, but then really breaking out here, post 230, driving up to test the highs, a bit of profit taking, then a further push higher. Really strong move to the upside during the US session, at least the early part of the US session. Where was the market aiming to take? What was the market aiming for? Well, this was a really strong support slash resistance line. So technically, great price point. All market participants seeing their break of the high, understanding we've now broken back into a range, a clean drive up to the R1, and then we start to see a little bit of profit taking and a bit of consolidation. And then this morning got asked, what was this big move down in US equities? Basically reversing. Um, you could say two thirds, but I'd say all of the European gains, X, the Asian session gains, the European gains were all reversed. Quite a sharp downtick. And what was driving this? Well, this is the um, reports coming out that the FBI had carried out a raid on Michael Cohn, which is uh, Donald Trump's uh, attorney of choice. And he's been with him since he was a, a businessman, since he was a TV, television superstar if you want to call him um and this is it's, it's unreal we're talking about donald trump the president of the united states and you know where was the raids taking place and on, on not just his attorney but clearly his his confidant um you know this is somebody that's been with trump for a very very long time and we've seen just in his administration actually people don't stick around with donald trump very long if they're very smart and intelligent um, then they will leave um, and if they are a bit naive, well, they'll stick around long enough to get fired. But this guy has been with Donald Trump, well, don't quote me on it, but in, in, in the space of decades. So they must really get along. Their personalities don't clash. They must have some sort of friendship. And he was raided. His office was raided. His house was raided. His hotel was raided. This sounds like a, a drug operation. This is like the bust of the cartel, you know? <laughs> this, is, this is the chief... Confident, I'm going, to, I'm going to put it out there for Donald Trump and his house, everything that he owns or where he resides has been raided. I think the market just shrugs this off. If you look at it, all we did was reverse the, this risk on move, but really no further Genius. drive higher. He's already played it so that he can get away with this sort of stuff. Oh yeah, oh he's a great guy. Now, that was his commentary. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. This, this reality show known as Donald Trump's administration continues and it's forever interesting, but Hey ho, equity markets took a bit of a tumble on the back of that. Um, now, what are we looking at? Let's, let's put this into context. So what are the FBI looking for? Well, it's Russia's meddling. So this coercion between Russia and the United States in trying to manipulate the US elections. You know, the greatest democracy in the world. Okay, if that isn't funny enough, well, this is the same guy who paid, um, what is her name? Storms. Da Stormy Daniels um, for keeping her mouth shut about her sexual affairs with Donald Trump. Once again, our married, pious leader of the free world. It just never really ends. But again, if you look at how much of a reaction the market has had, well, not much. We've just reversed a bit of a risk on move. And then the market settled down. So Donald Trump's fiascos continue. Um, but one thing I will say, I will put this on the mic right now. There will be a movie made about uh, Mueller. This guy is relentlessly going after Donald Trump and I, he has my full respect in that manner. He has made 19 arrests since he started to look into this coercion between the US and uh, Russia. Of the 19 people, he's got five guilty pleas, one of them being the chief economic advisor for the United States of America's president. Um, you know, we're talking about fraud, wire fraud, you know, election fraud. It's just, it's just endless. So now the question is, will this have any really lasting market impact? No. I think the market is completely comfortable with the fact that Donald Trump is a con man. He is, you know, just not the most respectable human being and we're going to start to see these sort of commentaries come out until Mueller 
Until Mueller starts to show his hand and say, yes, he's got evidence to suggest that Putin and Trump were in coercion. I think we've seen this move. I think this move is now over. We can package that, put that to a side, and then we can focus on what we saw next. And this move we saw next, well, we regained every single tick that we just lost in this massive move higher. So risk on, risk off, back to risk on. What caused this risk on? And this is... You know, we'll talk about this a little bit more technically, but this is the importance of understanding value areas and, and the range in the market. So this is following on from the Boao uh, Forum in China. So this is the Chinese equivalent of Davos. So this is where investors and leaders in the financial and, and economic um, arena come to talk. And what we saw is Xi Jinping uh, not mention Trump uh, by name, but some really market positive commentary coming out. Let me just, in no particular order, let's, let's turn to some of the comments we saw from Xi Jinping. You know, um, so he was warning against the return to cold warm mentality, uh, which is that tit for tat, I don't know what you're doing, you don't know what I'm doing, but we're all preparing for the worst. Um, he also confirmed that he wants to expand on proposals to increase imports, which is obviously one of the biggest issues that Donald Trump uh, keeps going on about when it comes to um, China. They, they have a massive surplus with the United States. So him saying they want to increase imports would reduce the surplus. Therefore, they'll import more from the United States, therefore um, supporting their economy. Lowering foreign ownership limits on manufacturing and expanding protectionism on intellectual property. Intellectual property was a huge thing that Donald, Donald Trump was um, sort of talking about as well. So without speaking about Donald Trump or the United States of America, he has quite clearly communicated to the market that at least in the medium to longer term, he will take this stuff into consideration. A um, couple more comments. Human society is facing a major choice to open or close, to go forward or go backwards. And... You know, the paying attention only to one's own community without thinking of others can often lead into a wall. Donald Trump doesn't really have any issues with walls. And we can only achieve win-win results by insisting on peaceful developments and working together. These are hugely positive comments. Um, almost sounds like the comments from a future world leader, more so than Donald Trump. Um, but market has loved this. This is basically the... Uh, with the train tensions, you've got the United States of America, you've got Donald Trump... Uh, China, sorry, United States of America and China. China is basically coming back and giving this conciliatory tone, saying, look, we have heard what you're saying and we'll, we will be looking to act upon this. But the problem is China has been promising for multiple years to sort of open their markets to foreign investors, um, you know, allow it to run more as a capitalistic society with companies not having sort of unilateral support from the government. So, I mean, he has reiterated this, and if he really does want to avoid a, um, a lasting trade tension slash trade war, he may want to act on this. But this is not him promising, I will make amends now, this very moment, this very second. Absolutely not. He's saying, I've heard what you say, I've taken it on board, and I am now addressing the world and showing my commitment to this in the longer term. So this is why the US equity market it hasn't really gone to reverse all of its moves and we are still pretty subdued from our all-time highs uh, let's just check where we're trading at the moment it's always interesting in terms of percentage gains or losses so we are around eight percent down okay so you know we have seen three four percent moves in the market uh, in recent days so I'd say risk on for now this Mueller situation um, Donald Trump and Michael Cohn situation that was digested I think this was also, this move low is also driven by nervousness because we have seen tit for tat for tit where China says something, US comes out and says something. There's continual argument going on between the two and actually um, China has given a conciliatory tone again. So some market, but before that, the market may have been nervous that China was then going to uh, retaliate. This is not to say that China, I don't believe, is showing a weak hand. They already said they've got detailed plans um, to address the issues at hand. They've already gone out and said that we're willing to devalue our currency. So... I think at the moment China is playing ball, fair ball, and it's going to be interesting to see how Donald Trump reacts this afternoon. Um, okay, so I just want to have a few moments to have a look at this chart, this market technically, have a look at where I think this market could be going, um, and some trade setups for the day. So with the US equity market, I think it's fair to say we're going to be in a risk on environment. Um, so having a look at where we're trading. It's always good to first of all get your trend lines on just to see what the market is looking at. Maybe something along the line.
things like that. No. Go from here. These highs connect them up. That will be a definite area of resistance where people are targeting. Where is the range? So we got some support coming in here, and these we got this triple, quadruple high here. So I'd say the market is relatively comfortable at the moment in and around here. We have this resistance here, resistance here, relative support there. So I'd be really looking for a risk on move in terms of your more aggressive trading styles, a break of the highs, um, and then a push further to maybe the trend line or to your R2 level. Plus we have this double top here. So this region here, we can already start to identify is going to be quite a difficult one for this market to get through. Um, but really looking for this trend, this double top, this R2 level, technically for some profit targets would be great. Now, if we got above there, which I think, let's see how the market trades. I wouldn't be buying too aggressively just yet. Well, that would then open up a little bit more room to the upside to maybe run up to this 2680 level. And that, I feel, would be really capping today's price action. Um, you know, unless Donald Trump comes out and starts to say that, you know, comments on this Boal forum and we hear positive comments coming out, then we could make a run up. Technically, we got the support level here from the 23rd leave. And then above that, the 2700 handle. That would be quite a big push. These would be levels that I'd be looking at over the next couple of days to the upside. Um, but in terms of entering this market, I think this R1 level provided great opportunity today thus far. Um, generally speaking, I wouldn't love a level like this because we have traded through it a few times. But given the fact that we have this positive sentiment, traders are going to be looking in um, to get involved in this risk on turn to that R1 to that high. However, if that R1 goes, and I think there's nothing really stopping this market till the pivot. And this pivot, I think, would be my optimal entry today. If the world stays the way that it is and the developments that have happened, um, I think this would be my optimal entry in terms of people are looking to go long. This is a, a strong resistance line, given the fact that it's your pivot level. You have a relatively decent place to protect your stop against. So there are a few opportunities. You've got your classics, your more aggressive trading style. If the market pops higher uh, on the downside, we've got the pullback. Let's next flick across to DAX just as we are in the European session. So we can see here in DAX, we have had quite a bullish open. Um, and as anyone who's familiar with the DAX, that can often lead to a gap close. We saw this as well. Um, on Monday, we had that gap higher. We drove, chopped around this R2 level only before falling and then filling that gap. And this is something I was discussing earlier on in the session as well. It's that key level of support, whereas people who are selling are to be looking to book profit, furthermore, as a support level to look to buy, and then the market drove higher. So once again, um, with the DAX, if you're getting involved before we have a gap close, I'd be getting in and out. And you can see we are sort of trending lower. We've got some lower lows here. Uh, I would be expecting us to make a test of this level. After a test, a break, maybe a classic, looking for your R1, your double top, your pivot, break a pivot. Um, this would be your official gap close over here. So quite a bit of room to the downside if the market does get going. But really, this is just breakfast for DAX to move down to its pivot level. So nothing really too concerning there. In terms of risk assets, uh, we didn't really look at this market cross asset. We did speak about this risk on move we saw in the US equities. Um, sorry, one final thing. Apologies, guys. I just wanted to talk about this 200 day moving average as well, which again has provided some great support. So technically, this 200 day moving average has been working very well. We didn't manage to close above it, but still providing a decent degree of support. And looking at this in the daily chart, this is really our range at the moment. Okay, sorry for the backtrack. Let me just have a look at T-notes. So while equities were rallying last night, we saw your bond market or your traditional safe havens also reverse previous gains to come test the bottom of the range. So I'd be expecting this to go lower. There was a trend line I had marked up on this market yesterday, which seems to have now given way, which was that, this trend here. Hmm. Maybe it was a smaller time frame. Yeah, so the trend going there broke back into pivot, taking us to the bottom. If we look at your dollar yen. <clears throat> dollar yen as well. Okay, so actually, look at this. The dollar yen, just as I'm watching, taking a bid. Let me just have a look on the headline, if anything has come out. 
AC, any words? Yeah, give us one second, guys. Okay, so, well, and just Ant's having a look at that. At the moment, we're seeing a bit of a tone go through the dolly yen. Let's have a quick look if this is the dolly yen or whether this is a, a yen move or a dollar move. We have seen the dollar weaken. Okay, so, guys, burn session highs at the moment. We are seeing, let's have a quick look back at T-Note. So just as we're speaking, T-Note's taking a bit here. The talks between the US and China have stalled regarding the high-tech industries. Talks between the US and China have stalled due to conflicts of the high-tech industry. Okay, so that's, that's the comment there. So talks between China and US have stalled uh, due to the high-tech industry. So what we were saying... Okay, so what we were seeing is that risk on move um, on the back of uh, further developments between the US and the, the US and China. Let's have a quick look where the S&P is trading. Here you go. So this is now a bit of a risk off tone coming in. So we've seen money flow into the yen here. We've seen S&P come under pressure, buns, T notes higher, yens going higher as well. The one caveat here is actually gold is trending, uh, sorry, oil is trending higher. Um, so this, this, this move may start to materialize and gain some um, ground. Have a look at the Aussie dollar here as a base in industrial metals. Before I start providing intraday analysis, I'm going to be wrapping up because this volatility is picking up. So yesterday, absolutely, equity market was rallying. Um, for safe havens were falling and a really opportunistic time for those comments to come out. We're now seeing at least a moderate reversal of these. So we are seeing S&P start to reverse. We are seeing money flow into the end, which initially had... Uh, we saw selling off the yen, now money is flowing into this yen. So we're seeing this reversal um, of safe havens. Guys, if you have missed this move, I wouldn't be too aggressive. We've seen a move, now we're going to consolidate. We've come up to some technical levels, bottom of the range. Let the market just catch its breath and then wait for another push. Really looking at your bond and safe haven markets. So have a quick flick at gold and look at the calendar and wrap up for the day. So gold, okay, so this is going to be a wink. If this level goes in gold, that's going to be a wink that this market's going to continue to move. Um, so you've got that really strong inverse correlation with dolly yen. So all eyes, please, if anyone is trading this in-house on this double, triple top here, a breaker there would result in a continued risk off tone. Let me just get the calendar up for today. So it is Tuesday, the 10th of April. Okay, so having a look at the calendar, uh, calendar um, 130 US PPI numbers coming out. So some inflationary numbers that now purchase a producer price index. Um, for March, I don't think this is going to move the market, but still an inflationary measure. Um, sorry. Um, as, so yeah, it's an inflationary measure, something that as market participants are going to be watching, but they won't be making any sort of intraday analysis, uh, intraday trading decisions on this. So inflation numbers always something to keep an eye on. Um, otherwise, there is limited data coming out of the US today, building permits, wholesale inventories from the US, API weekly crude stocks, you have your API numbers coming, API numbers coming out tonight, so that'll obviously have your impact on your oil market. So looking at speakers, so Xi Jinping was already speaking, we've seen his comments come out. Um, ECB Nowotny 845, so his comments have already come out. He's a hawk, speaking of monetary policy normalization. Let me just have a look at the headlines. Comments regarding him, ECB Nowotny says that we're an important turning point in monetary policy, adds policy must be normalized at the right time. So, slightly hawkish comments, no big deal. Um, 8.59, another headline flashing up, US rejects China's offer to cut trade deficit by U uh, 50 billion US dollars. Okay, so that's, that's what was causing this move. 9.30, we have Fed's Kaplan, who's a non-voter speaking. Um, I'd say... You know, he's always an interesting person to be listening to in his market view, so if you can get a hold of that speech, be listening to it. 10.30, BOE Haldane uh, delivers the David Finch public lecture in Melbourne. I'm just looking at the title of that, I don't think that's going to be particularly market moving, but do make sure you are aware that at 10.30, if you have any sterling related positions, you are aware that he's speaking. But I'll look at, I'll, I'll have a look into what the comment, or what, what the title of his speech is, but given the fact that he's speaking, um, I need to find out what David Finch public lecture is. Uh, so just be careful there. And then 4.30, ECB speaks to book presentation run. Okay, so guys, again, today is going to be a relatively quiet day in terms of your um, calendar. 
let me just get the economic calendar out and we were discussing so this even though today is quiet this week is not quiet so Tuesday coming into Wednesday we have Draghi speaking and we have the Fed minute so central bank of uh, Europe central bank of the United States uh, come events happening tomorrow plus we have US inflation numbers it's all about tomorrow okay all about tomorrow so um, you know I'll reiterate this again don't trade too much today Re in terms of where the risk is in terms of where the opportunity is tomorrow is the day so one more day of patience uh, make sure you're raring to go by the time uh, we see uh, Draghi by the time we see the Fed's minutes by the time we see the inflation numbers coming out and then that'll take us into Thursday and Thursday we have some other numbers coming out as well import export prices coming out and that brings us finally into Friday where we have US Michigan sentiment numbers coming out. So interesting week ahead of us, guys. Let's not get carried away. Um, today is going to be quiet. This is really going to be driven by um, this trade talk. And we've already seen that sort of pick up US rejecting China's offer so early on in the European session. And just to finish off, just having a look at the ruble taking another extended move here. Um, so I'm sure that the Russian stock market is taking a tumble. Okay, guys, um, that's a wrap for me. Uh, just before I leave, again, look at your safe havens to give you direction. As we were saying, they've come to the top of the range. Things are calming down at the moment. Let's see how the day progresses. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. Have a great day.